not be what is required, okay, to meet the connectivity. Okay, so all decisions, okay, in this kind of scenario are taken either with the help of software running somewhere or entirely by software running somewhere, although there's a little bit there, okay, where it follows. So you need a server or some software running somewhere, you need connectivity. And connectivity is the key here, okay, because let's the minute you talk about remote monitoring, okay, you talk to somebody else somewhere else, and you need to be able to get a communication network which works the way you want and transport data the way you want and gets it, uh, gets data uh, with the reliability that you want. Okay, so all of these are less or more critical for different processes. And different wireless methods are used for each of these. <coughs> okay, so let's look at Wi-Fi. Um, one of the biggest uh, uh, advantages of Wi-Fi is IP based. Okay, when I say IP is internet protocol, and the word internet tells you. Anything that is IP is on the internet. So you can access it anywhere. Okay, the picture is immediately clear. If you're using IP protocol, you can be anywhere in the world and get the data. It's become that universal. So Wi-Fi is fundamentally IP based. Okay, so you take data, okay, and, and, and you, you, this is a payload that you want to transfer. And the payload is actually encapsulated in, first of all, an IP header and a TCP header. It can be UDP as well, okay. Uh, but IP is the one which delivers the data. TCP decides, okay, whether you want to retransmit it because it did not reach properly and takes care of uh, setting up connections. Uh, and further, for the first cost of the first cost, use an 811 for the wireless LAN header. So the wireless LAN header works across the wireless link. As soon as you reach a router, the wireless link is broken and all the wireless LAN header is switched off. And what you're left with is the TCP IP uh, encapsulated data. And that can go anywhere around the world, through routers, across continents, and any end device, okay, which will grab this data based on the IP address is it's, uh, it, it's mentioned in the destination address. Okay, so that's what makes it a universal and one of the biggest advantages of using Wi-Fi as a wireless technology. Okay, so the important thing is that okay, you can offer to other things, but you need more layers of networking software to achieve the same. Okay, the Wi-Fi is pretty straightforward. Okay, applications can run directly off the stack. It can either be a wired connection, like an internet connection, or it can be wireless. It doesn't really matter to the application. Okay, so one of the advantages of Wi-Fi, if you are using an equipment uh, and you want to take data out wirelessly, is that Wireless is actually a, a two-way process. Okay, I mean, you have something transmitting, you need something to receive. And wireless, okay, requires planning. Any connectivity requires planning. How you want to run wires, how you, how you want to transfer data, what power you use, okay, how reliable you want it to be. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, every single, almost every single facility in the world today is already analyzed for good Wi-Fi. We have Wi-Fi right here in this hall. Every hospital, okay, almost all of every hospital uh, in the developed world and all of them here also have Wi-Fi in there. Every office has, and so on. So the the all the pain of determining where wireless access points must be placed, which are the uh, hot spots, which are the dead areas, all that analysis probably has been done. So if you want to introduce an equipment which is new in the sense that you don't carry an equipment along with a monitor together with it only carry something, a sensor, and let the monitor be sitting anywhere else, anybody can watch it anywhere, you already have a network that is set up. That's one of the advantages of Wi-Fi. Okay, it also has enterprise class security. Now the security of the data in Wi-Fi, the methods that are defined, are strong enough for the US Department of Defense to classify it as sufficient for any of that application. Okay, it uses 128-bit command uh, encryption standard and is extremely secure. And medical data is, uh, is very sensitive. It may not have, or it may have a monetary value, but it has a lot of uh, privacy issues. And unless you have, uh, in fact, actually, uh, uh, our customers who create medical equipment uh, require uh, US Department of Defense class of security. That means that they actually run the system to check, it's called a FIPS 140-2 standard, uh, they actually test whether the keys, the algorithm is secure enough or not. 
The commercial side side, they don't bother. As long as you're certified, you are qualified, then it's fine. Uh, Wi-Fi also has a wide variety of gigabits. Okay, so you can actually have one GPS link, or you can have up to 1.7 gigabits per second link. Uh, all of them are based upon what kind of modulation schemes you use, how far you are from the transmitter, uh, how much power is being transmitted, and so on. So in general, okay, Wi-Fi can be flexible to adapt to small data rate or small throughput sensor applications, all the way to high definition imaging. So using one single wireless standard or one single wireless device, you can actually have uh, anything that you want. You can make it, uh, you can get a okay, 20 Mbps, okay, uh, high definition uh, HD video transmission. You can have, okay, I mean, a uh, 40 megapixel camera taking image and sending it out in a few seconds. All of those things are possible with Wi-Fi. And you can get, if you, although Wi-Fi is primarily meant for indoor applications after about 100 meters range, it can also work outdoors up to 500 meters and you can use it uh, outdoors as well. The technology is mature. So one of the uh, key things about electronics is that every year okay, people expect fibers to drop. And fibers drop as the technology catches on and more and more people take it up and the, and, the, and, and the devices are stored in larger and larger numbers. It's all to do with volume. So as the technology matures, prices do drop, and they continue to drop up to a certain point, and then a new technology comes in and takes off from where it was. Okay, so that the cycle has been going on, but Wi-Fi is so widespread that no, I mean, Wi-Fi keeps on evolving. Okay, so every year, okay, there are new standards, additions, okay, uh, that take place, but fundamentally, they all are there, they're all factor compatible. Okay, so there is guaranteed compatibility, okay, for a long period of time uh, for this technology. It's very easy for the problem with that. Okay, so let's look at Bluetooth. Uh, so Bluetooth 4.0, also known as Bluetooth Low Energy, and uh, it's also called Bluetooth Smart. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a terminology for Bluetooth Smart. The sensor which sends data is called a Bluetooth Smart device, and the gateway which receives data is called a Bluetooth Smart Ready device. Now, uh, Bluetooth, we are all aware of, okay, we, we, we stream data from our cell phone to our headphones. We share data between our two, two, two cell phones or two computers. So, Bluetooth was a personal area network. It was primarily peer to peer. Okay, whereas Bluetooth Low Energy, which was created for sensor applications, is a kind of a master slave approach. The devices are smart. Why are they smart? Because they are not on all the time. Whenever they walk occasionally, they wake up, send data, and go back to sleep. The other side, which receives the data, is called Bluetooth Smart Ready, which means that it's always ready to receive data. That means it's always awake, always listening. And therefore, if you're listening, you are gaining some power. The Bluetooth Smart devices are the small sensors which wake up once in a while, okay, and send data and go back to sleep. And the entire, entire uh, see, whenever we uh, design a wireless standard, okay, I know that this has been part of the standard definition process, is that wireless needs to be tailored for an application. Okay? Both the physical layer, the Mac layer, and many other bits. So wireless is a shared medium. If you want to share it, you need to set rules on how you want to share it. Wireless and, for example, if before you get onto the internet, okay, you switch it on, you scan for access points. You find the names of the access points. You click on an access point, you fix the password. Okay, then it establishes an authentication and an association with that point. Then the IP layer comes in. Okay, you have the uh, DHCP or IP negotiation. So you have a whole set of steps before you are even allowed to send one single byte of data. Okay, so when they started looking at that, okay, they said they saw that if I wake up once in a while and then I spent 100 milliseconds simply trying to establish my network. The battery is already partly gone. Okay, so what can we do? So they cut down all that protocol and made it possible for someone to start and finish a particular data transaction in less than three milliseconds. Okay, and that requires the standard to be defined so that it is active. So whenever a Bluetooth smart sensor wakes up, it knows that it does not have to be on for more than three milliseconds. It sends the data and goes back to sleep. The Bluetooth smart ready device to which it's talking to is always ready to listen. More important than that, they wanted some wireless technology that can work reliably with point cells. 
in order that the button cells are used by the using car remote keys, okay, but they don't carry much data. They carry extremely small amount of data. And uh, uh, although sensors do carry small amount of data, they do carry some data. So you do need a little bit of a complex modulation scheme. However, complex modulation schemes such as OFDM, which is used in the wireless man, okay, are complex and therefore they burn a lot of power with your transmitting. Fine, okay, you can send data at 54 Mbps, finish your data in, in a few tens of microseconds, and then you can go back to sleep. So your energy is still less. Bluetooth low energy does not mean it's really low energy, it's actually low power. So wireless LAN, okay, if you are sending data at a 50 times the speed of Bluetooth, even if you consume 25 times the power, it doesn't matter because your battery drain is power multiplied by time. You can reduce power or you can reduce time. But there is a downside to having a high power and you can transmit at lower, smaller time and go back to sleep. It's still lower energy. But there's a downside to it because in battery technology, the technology that gives you power should be able to handle the peak of 200 milliamps or more that Wi-Fi requires. Now, most button cells or no button cell can do it. The battery technology doesn't allow it. Even our artificial cells of your hand do it. So you need special batteries to be able to power it. You need the lithium cells that are used in cell phones. Okay, and they are heavy and they, are, they, 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 they don't fit this application. You cannot strap it on your wrist and, and walk around. Okay, so they defined a the modulation scheme and mechanisms in the Bluetooth so that Bluetooth low energy so that you do not exceed 30 milliamps of current. Most actual devices in the field today take less than 10 milliamps. But 30 milliamps is a golden number which button cells can actually give. So they use a technology, a modulation scheme called the ESSK. They use a very highly efficient power amplifier for that. But the connection is transferred in a client server architecture unlike the earlier version of Bluetooth. So the applications that are now okay, really enter but the medical domain, this is catching on really fast, okay, pulse rate monitoring, ECG sensor, blood pressure monitoring, fitness aid. Okay, there are other technologies like hand and so on, which people have been using as quick rate users, but uh, the future is Bluetooth low energy for all those applications. Now Bluetooth okay, I mean, uh, suffers from the problem of software complexity. You cannot run any application on it. If you set up a Bluetooth link, uh, you need to run an application, a headset profile, or a data transfer profile, or synchronization profile. In the case of Bluetooth low energy, the heart rate monitoring profile, there are general profiles, but it is restricted. Okay, so but that's still code code. Okay, so you need to define what you want to use Bluetooth uh, uh, code configure for. But how about okay, I mean, when you want to actually transfer data? So Bluetooth low energy requires a gateway to receive your data, the Bluetooth smart ready device. Okay? There are two ways of doing it. One way of doing it is using a cell phone. Uh, all Apple phones okay, are Bluetooth 4.0 ready already. Uh, every single smartphone in the world has got Bluetooth 4.0 uh, physics the hardware in it. It's been having it for the last two years, but not in any case. Apple has enabled it in all their devices. Android, Nokia is doing it now. Okay, Android devices will also get it because almost your the chances are 90% that okay, your phone already has Bluetooth uh, low energy in it. Simply not enabled by software. Anyway, that's how the industry works. Now you can actually once you hit the cell phone, which is always on, for example, one of the applications of Bluetooth low energy uh, is is that as you are running, okay, you can get data from your shoe and into your phone. You can get your pulse rate into your phone. Okay, and when you come back from the job, you can actually get all the data that you that you wanted. Uh, and then you can transfer it to a cloud server, you can run software, you can see how you did today, and so on. And similarly, you can have a small coin uh, coin size device in your wallet, and your cell phone in your wallet are always in sync. If they ever go more than two meters apart, then the cell phone starts beeping. Okay, security mechanism. Okay, so all of those things are possible, but uh, the, the smartphone-based gateways are very popular for fitness purposes. Okay, I mean, I think somebody has mentioned one of the reasons why it is not uh, really prevalent uh, in, in real medical or CDS applications is that the element of risk you need to be qualified and ready to device. But in the fitness world, okay, it is very, very common. 
But in the real medical world, a lot of people are building these uh, by by the Bluetooth gateway. They include applications which uh, include a um, tetherless EPG, just having C or four, just being stuck on, no wires at all. Uh, and all kinds of, I mean, all the monitors without wires, you just stick it on, okay, and then you have a device which has data, and then they have an access point. Once on the access point, they're out into the, into the whole world. Okay, so the, it's important to create a, a gateway as well as the right sensor. Each of them is a separate design, and each of them, okay, is optimized for a certain purpose. Okay, so this one aggregates, you should be able to talk to all of these sensors as soon as they want to send data. You should parallelly and simultaneously run a Wi-Fi network into the hospital access point or the home access point, which assumes that it will already exist. Then you don't have to worry about SIM card, you don't have to worry about data plan. Okay, I mean you can make this as reliable as you want. Any wireless uh, standard, any, any wireless is necessary, you cannot be 100 percent reliable, but there are ways in which you can build it, build in reliability, okay, by adding like a lot of I mean uh, safety features on top of it. Okay, so how do you integrate okay wireless into a device? Okay, so one of the most common ways is you use something called a self-contained body. Okay, a wireless system is more than a one or two functions. Okay, there are a number of functions involved here. The RF transceiver and power amplifier, the antenna, the crystal of for, for a good frequency reference is very important to wireless. Then you have a signal processing block, analog and digital conversion. Then you have a MAC layer for the thing which handles the data as a MAC layer. Okay, and then you interface to the host micro microcontroller. Because eventually, yeah, any sensor device or any device is built around a programmable microcontroller. Okay, so the best way to do it is to use a module which already contains everything. So that for the first, if you are creating a device, uh, an equipment, you concentrate on your sensors and your sensor processing and leave the entire wireless processing to some other device with a very simple interface. Set it by PDF block and this will create the entire uh, networking stack, the TCP IP and wireless LAN and everything in the data. That's the common way of doing it. <coughs> the cloud is entering this in, in more ways than one. Okay? Everything is cloud based. Uh, no matter what you do, okay, you cannot actually exceed certain capacity on your controller. You cannot actually, if you think of nice ways of programming, filtering, algorithms, you can't really keep adding them to your, to your microcontroller, your device. Okay, you have to push the processing out to the cloud, and that's where everything comes. If you go to the gateway, the gateway sends the data to the cloud, and then you can do as much processing as you want. You can actually uh, pull in data from other sources. Okay, you can actually deliver medication based upon weather reports, based upon where you're going to go. Okay, everything else can be, I mean, pulled in. Data can be pulled in from every source you can think of, and the most intelligent decision can be made. All that involves the cloud, and that's entering this field, I mean, and more and more today. Okay, so a, a, a quick word on one of the devices that we've been working on recently and which we released recently. Okay, is a combo device which does wireless NAN and Bluetooth and Zigbee. This is used in more complementary applications and all put together in a form with an without an antenna or with an antenna. So everything is completely included in this. Okay, and then we have uh, uh, a lots of interest in people building medical devices which is using this. We have evaluation boards and everything else. Okay, so it's, it's really simple to create a, a, a wireless interface using this. Okay, so that was my quick and short overview. Okay, I know we're running out of time, so I spoke a little bit longer, but we are happy to take a lot of questions. Thanks, Vengadesh, for your talk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Suppose after that uh, we have a device on which we have the Bluetooth uh, 2.0 here installed, with uh, communicating with the uh, mobile with the interior port profile. Mm -hmm. If I switch on and switch off my device, yeah. How this is different from uh, 4.0? Right. Okay. So uh, Bluetooth 4.0 uh, will give you the reduced peak current. Okay. The Bluetooth 2.0 or 3.0, the modulation schemes are slightly different. Okay. They do not guarantee you that actually 10 milliamp or so on. 
first of all, that is one difference. But secondly, we have seen connection set up time. In Google 4.0, the connection set up time, even after you see from, has been reduced a lot. Both of these are beneficial. 